Hello, everyone. This is Christy Gusick, and apparently I forgot to hit unmute, so we're going to start this presentation over. So this is Christy Gusick, and welcome to SEO for, SEO for Dummies, Top Strategies for Success. And I'm really excited to give this presentation today because I have a lot to learn about this topic myself. And so I will be learning right alongside you today as we move forward through this presentation. So right here is just a little bit about myself and my background. And uh, one of the, the things I'm most proud about is that I am a partner here at Professional Services Marketing alongside Terry Wheeler, who is the founder of, of PSM. And today is my turn. Terry and I rotate throughout the year in giving presentations. And so today is my webinar. And I chose to do a webinar today on search engine optimization, because again, this is something that I really wanted to learn more about. One of the things that you really need to know today is that the real expert behind today's webinar is Dove Shore. And Dove is our PSM resident SEO expert. And Dove is just a genius when it comes to SEO. And we turn to him for all our SEO for our clients and for our own business. And actually, we're thrilled to have Dove as a part of our team because Terry and I were somewhat skeptical about search engine optimization maybe about a year and a half, two years ago, and just wondering what role it really played in a strategy, marketing strategy for a professional services organization. And thankfully, we were connected with Dove through one of our clients and uh, went ahead and tried Dove and tried search engine optimization out on our own business, and we're extremely pleased with the results that we got uh, in using Dove. So this picture right here is actually a picture of Dove and I chatting last week via Skype when Dove and I uh, conversed about this topic. And Dove shared with me a lot of the content that I'm going to be talking about today. And I will admit, it was hard to kind of condense down what Dove had to share with me and what I've learned about SEO into a 30-minute webinar. So just bear with me because I'm, I'm uh, hopefully going to be able to give you just a real high-level understanding of search engine optimization. So today, this is what we're going to talk about. First, we're going to just describe what SEO is and the difference between SEO and what is commonly also referred to hand-in-hand -hand with SEO, which is SEM. And don't worry, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and then we're going to talk about what actually goes into coming up at the top of a search or a search engine, how to maximize your search engine uh, results for your website. Then what do you do with keywords? Do you use a lot of keywords, a few keywords? We're going to go into that and give you some guidance in that area. And then also discuss what type of content you should be focusing on with your own search engine optimization how to claim your, or stake your claim on Google. And lastly, the importance of reviews and what reviews you should focus on when it comes to your own online reviews. And lastly, we'll go through some next steps that you can take to be successful with your own search engine optimization, as well as address any questions that you have. So before we begin, just a couple of housekeeping tips. And the first one is that if you notice on your box, your GoToWebinar uh, task bar box, that there is a couple things that I want to draw your attention to. One is that there are, <clears throat> excuse me, three handouts in there that you can download at any time. <clears throat> excuse me anytime throughout this presentation. The first one is um, just a blog posting worksheet that uh, Terry actually put together uh, recently that you can use to create blogs. The next one is a copy of today's presentation. If you want to go ahead and download that, feel free to. And then lastly, we're going to talk about directories and how to update directories. And so we've got a document that can um, kind of walk you through two of the most popular resources to help you update your business listings online, which are Yext and Moz. And we will talk about those later in the presentation. Lastly, as if you've attended one of our webinars before, you'll know that Terry and I always leave time at the end for questions. So there is a chat box on your taskbar. 
And anytime you have a question, feel free to go ahead and jot that question down in the chat box, and I will be happy to address your questions at the end of today's webinar. One final note, at the end of this webinar today, when you exit, you will have the opportunity to complete a survey. And we always look forward to people's comments, feedback, and recommendations on what type of educational webinars you'd like to hear from, uh, hear us talk on next, or any kind of feedback you have for us on your, our webinars. So please feel free to fill that out and, and give us feedback. We appreciate it. Without any further ado, we're going to jump right in. So the very first thing I want to do is just give you a really high-level definition of what search engine optimization is. I think everybody understands that, but really what I want to do is just kind of differentiate search engine optimization from search engine marketing. So search engine optimization is really just all the, the processes used to maximize the number of visitors that you can get to your website and uh, just how you can ensure that your site appears high on the list of results based on whatever search engine someone's using to look for your service, your business, or any somebody's name at your business. So it's just the whole process of ensuring that your website comes up high in a search. Now, you will also hear people occasionally mention search engine marketing. <clears throat> so search engine optimization is a part of, or comes under the umbrella of search engine marketing. So search engine marketing is a form of internet marketing that promotes websites by increasing their visibility in search engine page results through optimization and advertising. So um, it's just the whole process of marketing online. And that can include all kinds of things, um, such as paid, uh, results and all kinds of things. So one of the, th the big thing I guess that I just really want you to pull out of this is that what we're going to be focusing on today is for the purposes of this conversation is search engine optimization. Okay, so let's talk about the anatomy of a search. So there's three components of any search that you do online and not all three components will come up at any given time when you search for a website or a service or a person, but generally speaking, these are the three things that, that you can see on a search. The very first thing that you'll often see at the top of a page when you do a search is paid results. And paid results are the people that actually pay an advertising fee, and that fee is based on click-throughs, or ad views, and those are often anywhere from zero to four results at the top of a page. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like in just a moment. The next thing that you'll often see in the search results are the local results. So Google allows what's called the local pack up to zero to three businesses that will be shown at the underneath the paid ads that can be triggered during a local search. And this is called the local pack or the local results. And again, that's anywhere up to three businesses. And lastly, the big thing that we're really going to talk about a lot about today is organic search results. And these results are listings on a search engine's page that appear simply because of their relevance to the search term. So that is going to be the, the biggest thing that we're going to talk about today because in terms of a, of a professional service firm, it is going to be really the thing that you want to focus on the most because it allows you to be shown as the expert on a particular ser uh, search term based on the content on your site and other things that you're doing to improve your organic search results. So just to give you a picture, and Dove actually shared this information for me, but this is a picture uh, based on the search term New York City Accountant. And this is breaking down the search results into those three, again, the three components of a search, paid, local results, and organic. And right here at the top are the paid search results. 
And you can see those, there's four paid search results, just like we had talked about. Next are the local search results. And again, Google allows up to three of those, and there's three local search results. And lastly, at the bottom of the page are the organic search results. And those are just based on people that come up the highest based on the relevance to the search term. Now, this is, I'm, I'm going to be honest, this gets, uh, this next topic is a little bit more sophisticated, but I'm going to run through it for those of you that are interested. So when it comes to really maximizing your search results, two of the things that you can do are focus on your title tags and your meta description. So right here you'll see Google My Business listing, and that is something we're going to talk about a little bit more here in a few minutes, but that's your local search results. And if you see underneath that, this is a search for accountants, and in particular one of our clients, John A. Knudsen. And if you see, what we've done is we've actually created a title tag, so it lists on their page, it allows you to, and I'll show you where in a moment, put a description of what JAK is. They're Twin Cities accountant firm, and they specialize in taxes and financial planning. And then underneath that, on their website, they're allowed to put a meta description, which actually goes into a little bit more detail about their firm and what it is. So in terms of how you do that, um, there is a tool that you can use called Yoast, and you can use it on your site. That is a plugin on your WordPress site that will allow you to manage your description and your page titles. So you can use a paid version of this or a free version. It really uh, is completely up to you. But a couple things you want to know about these are is a title tag tends to be, and you see the, the picture there of what a title tag is, 55 to 61 characters. And generally speaking, our consultant, Dove, aims for 59 characters. And the title tag is where you enter the website. So the next part there is the meta description. And the meta description can be anywhere from 155 to 170 characters. And just to go into that a little bit more in detail, this is what it, the Yoast plugin looks like. And you'll see this is on the uh, back side of your WordPress site. And this is really easy to edit and easy to do yourself. And these are the areas where you can edit the title tag and how it will appear in a search, as well as edit where you can edit the meta description. And, and again, this is what it looks like using Yoast. And I promise you this is about the most sophisticated we're going to be in terms of search engine optimization on today's webinar. So just bear with me in this area because I know this, this might be a little more sophisticated for some of you, but it's, it's really helpful to understand this. <clears throat> okay. So how can you help <clears throat> your search engine results organically? So one of the first things you want to do is define your top keywords. And then <clears throat> have excellent content on your website and uh, quality content. Again, optimi optimize your page titles, which we've just talked about. Write compelling meta descriptions. And then link your pages back to your site. So um, especially if you can link your social media sites through to your website, that's extremely helpful. So now let's talk about how to really maximize those keywords. <laughs> the key to your keywords, and you'll see my, my shoe there in just a moment, and I'll talk about uh, how that pertains. So when it comes to keywords, one of the very first things you want to do <clears throat> is really be strategic and, and you hear strategic a lot from Terry and I because really our key value with our clients is strategy. So everything we do has a strategy behind it. So when it comes to your keywords on your website, you really do want to spend some time thinking about what you want to be known for. 
on your website, both in terms of the external content and in terms of the strategy behind your search engine optimization. So keywords. Think about what your clients might be, the terms your clients or your prospects might be using to find your website. So brainstorm, have a brainstorming session with some of your colleagues and maybe ask some of your clients how they found you and what type of terms they used. Also research your competition. See what your competition has on their website. Also do some searches online to see what who comes up first and what kind of keywords come up in their uh, their titles and their meta descriptions and what's on their website. And then think strategically about who you want to attract to your site. What type of client do you want to attract? For example, if you're a CPA firm, do you want to attract people that are looking for someone to do a 1040, just individual tax returns? Or are you looking for construction clients, people that own construction businesses? So you really want to think, what level of client and what type of client you want to be attracting to your website. So be creative and, and long tail keywords, the difference between a what we call a short term or a single individual keyword versus a long tail search is where this shoe comes into play. So a long tail search is somebody that's more um, detailed in what they're looking for when they're searching. So I could be searching just for shoes online and that's an individual single keyword. And if so, I'm kind of kicking the tires. You know, I'm just kind of looking around at just shoes in general. But this particular shoe is one that I actually have coming in the mail, hopefully today, from Zappos. Um, which is, and I, I searched very specifically to find somewhere online I could get these shoes because I actually saw somebody in Target wearing these shoes. And she told me what to look for. And I, I wanted to shop for it. So I had to look for, and this is an example of a long tail keyword search, which is 70% of search results. And that was a size eight wide beige Dansko sandal. So that's five things that I just said in my search, and I searched with a long tail search request because I was very interested in buying that particular shoe. So as you're thinking about strategically about your keywords, you're gonna wanna think, how is my ideal A-level prospect possibly going to be searching for my services? So yes, it takes a little thought and it takes strategy, but the more detailed you can be with those long-tailed search terms, the more likely you are to get those qualified prospects to your website. And then lastly here, be succinct. So one thing that Dove really emphasized when he was preparing me for today's webinar was that Google is always evolving. Things change all the time. So what used to be called keyword stuffing on a web page, which is where you just had, you know, random people just creating content for your website to just stuff as many keywords as they could on a, on a page. That is no longer gonna work for you. In fact, it will discount you in Google's eyes because Google now is smart enough to know if you are strategic about your keywords or not. So stay focused, one keyword, per page, don't spam your keywords. That will hurt you. And the reason why is because now, Google uses what's, ca what's called a semantic search. So semantic search is, or not Google, any search engine now uses um, semantic searches which improve the accuracy of your search results by understanding a searcher's intent through your contextual meaning. So there's a couple different ways that this plays out. One, as you are creating content on your website, you might have, um, and I'm gonna show you an example of one of our clients here uh, in a few minutes, where he really focuses, he's a family law attorney and he focuses on serving fathers. And so several different ways that you, he uses that term is um, father, dad, paternal, etc. throughout his website. Um, next, uh, semantic search also means that Google knows how you as an individual tend to search. So 
each person has kind of a history with Google on their computer in terms of how they've searched and what type of searches they've been doing, and that plays into your results as well. So as you're thinking of keywords, think of synonyms that you can use that relate to your top priority. Next, again, don't over, overstuff with the exact same word. Think of different ways to address the same type of concept. Really think about top quality content. Uh, it's great to have people that can write for you or have um, you know, someone within your firm that's a great writer write your content. And then one thing that our designer, Michelle, is, Michelle Wheeler, is really good at is she uses designs, uh, titles, and content on her pages to convey one message and to really reiterate the meaning or the keywords of the topic of that particular page. So you want to make sure that Google understands that you are an expert on your topic. And again, here is an example of our uh, law firm in New Jersey, the Brad Micklin Law Group, that is, um, just if you have a chance to go here, it's a great example of, of the things that we just talked about, keywords, using them in different contexts, and also, um, here's another example of addressing different things in several different ways. So content is still king. So let's talk about content quality, uh, making sure that you have just really good, unique, valuable, and engaging content on your website. One of the things that you can do is use Google's Webmaster Content Guidelines. Google that. I actually put a hyperlink there that you can use um, to find out a little bit more of what type of guidelines Google looks for when it looks for excellent content. And then the next thing you want to do is make sure that you have at least 300 to 500 words per page, and ideally, if possible, 500, 500 to 700 words per page. And then show your content, show your expertise uh, based on uh, blog posts. So link your content from blog posts back to your pages, and then go deeper within your existing content on your site. And I apologize, I'm having technical difficulty here, so I'm just going to have to put you on hold for one moment. Okay, thank you, sorry about that. Okay, when it comes to blogging, you wanna make sure that you use, use what's called clickbait for your titles. What that means is now, Google again is getting smarter as it evolves, so the five things your construction company must do to survive tax season. So this is one way that you can really intrigue people to click through your content. Uh, Dove actually recommends that you use odd titles or odd numbers, I should say, instead of you know the 10 things that you can do, which is a very overused, uh, 10 is overused number. He said be really unique and creative when it comes to your blog posts and definitely use odd numbers. Be seasonal and relevant. In other words, think about the time of year when you write your blog posts and actually go you know, into specifics about that time of year. So here's an example, strategies for managing your construction company's workflow in the winter. So that's something you wanna do, um, again, to a tree, um, a appeal to construction companies, which you know, for some people might be your target market. And then also, 
you know, talking about the time of year, if you're being strategic about the winter um, and, uh, you know, thinking about how people can manage things in the winter, Google will, will think you are more of an expert if you keep it seasonal and relevant. And then choose one keyword for each blog post and then don't be afraid to go into depth about that particular topic on your blog post. There's really no limit on blog posts, whereas on page content, you know, you're trying to shoot between 300 to 500 words. Um, on blog posts, you can go into more detail and be more sophisticated about your topic. And lastly, make sure you share your blog posts uh, via social media channels. And uh, anytime you can link from your content in your website through to your blog post, your blog post back to content in your website, and push your blog posts out through your social media channels, all that will improve your search engine results, search engine optimization, and your opportunities for coming up high in a search engine result. Next, let's talk about staking your claim on Google. This is uh, really important because, again, of that local, those local results. So Google My Business is a service that provides free listings that allows businesses, organizations, brands to manage their online information. So the website for that is google.business.com. And basically, this is fed into Google Maps. And so anytime that you're searching for a company or somebody's searching for you, and you come up in that, those local search results, which is, again, the second chunk of search results, um, that is because somebody has registered their business on google.business.com. And also, there's lots of other directories out there online. I know um, there's still yellow pages and different directories out there besides just Google Maps. And this is where we um, recommend that you can use the directories Moz, or excuse me, use the services Moz and Yext to keep those directories updated. And that's one of the documents that we've shared on the webinar and the go to uh, webinar taskbar. So if you want to download those and find out what those services all are about, feel free to do that because those are two of our highest recommended directory update services per Dove. So your google.business.com account is set up free through a, a Gmail account. And Dove uh, wanted me to make sure that I, I pass along to everybody. Don't forget your username and your password. And um, that happens because somebody may leave an organization and, and nobody knows the password. And we've struggled through that a few times with our clients. So make sure you don't forget your password. And then when you do set up the google.business.com account, make sure that you have your address, your hours, and your phone numbers on there and keep them updated. And the hours are really more important for maybe mom and pop shops, but at the same time you want to make sure that it's still relevant for your business and on there because it does uh, show up in your results. And then the last thing you want to do is make sure that you have multiple admins on your account. It doesn't hurt to have multiple people. You can still always be the primary account manager but you can have a secondary manager, you can have a communications manager, you can have a lot of people on that account to help keep it updated. And again, this ensures that you come up in those local searches. So if somebody says uh, family law firm, badness heights, or something more specific, you want to ensure that your, your business comes up anytime people put in those more specific or long tail search terms. So here's an example of what that actually looks like. Again, this is our CPA firm client, John A. Knudsen, and this is results based on their Google business account. And this is what we've done to make sure that they come up in the local results, and this is the description that we've used for their Google business account. Okay. So we do get the question a lot about reviews and what reviews are important for our clients to have their clients do and um, what to do if you have bad reviews. So this is actually the order that 
we recommend that you do your reviews in. So if you're going to, I know it's hard to get reviews in all areas at once. And so the very first thing you want to focus on is your Google reviews and asking clients to rate you on Google. The next most important type of reviews are your Facebook reviews and, and then uh, asking people to review you on Facebook. And lastly, at least for professional services firms, are the Yelp reviews and having clients refer you on Yelp. Now for a food-based business or a hotel, um, those businesses are going to rely a little bit more on Yelp, but for professional services, you're going to want to focus on your Google reviews. And what I did here at the bottom of this page is I put a link to our blog that Terry wrote on how to ask clients for reviews. And she wrote a really nice blog post on this, which actually goes into detail on how you can send an email to a clients with the pre-populated um, option to review right there in the email. And so it's just a great, simple, quick way for your clients to be able to quickly uh, go ahead and review you on Google, which is extremely helpful. Now, we have had some clients, um, especially family law offices, ask us about bad reviews. And what Dove has said is that don't worry about the bad reviews because it, I know it's stressful, but he said it's unrealistic when you look at reviews to see just all five-star reviews, perfect reviews. It's It's not really believable and he said so the occasional bad review here and there is not really going to hurt your uh, viewers opinion of you because people understand that occasionally things happen either a person's a little crazy and they give a bad review because they just are angry or you know occasionally people are not perfect and so what you really want to focus on doing is still continuing to ask your good clients and people that have had a good experience with you for those positive reviews and just really do your best to you know understand that the bad reviews are going to happen and you can do you can bury those with your better reviews eventually over time but it still needs to be reasonable and not quote unquote fake okay so what are some next steps that you can do to just optimize your own search engine results so right off the bat, the very first thing that we would recommend you do is sign up for a Google Analytics account. And this is going to make it possible for you to actually analyze your search engine optimization results over time. One of the things you want to know is that anywhere from 10% up in a month to 10% down in a month in terms of your results is really pretty normal and pretty standard. What you want to watch for is anything above that 10% or anything below that 10%. Next, register and update your business on google.business.com. And we just talked about why that's important because of those local search results. And then be strategic about your keywords. What type of keywords do you want to use? What type of clients do you want to attract? What type of short terms, what type of long term, long tail search results are you going to focus on on your website? And one of the things that, that we do and really think is extremely important is a, a solid site map. And I know Michelle Wheeler, again, is just extremely good at creating a very strategic site map before we build a website for our clients. And sharing that with our writer so that they can be very thoughtful about what keywords we're going to use for each area on the site, what service areas we're going to focus on, and how, to, how that's going to play out on a website. Again, review your titles and meta tags, and we recommend using Yoast as a plugin on your WordPress site to help you do that on each page. And then build out excellent content on your website. And this is just extremely important to continue to do over time. That's not something that you want to just be, you know, create your website, be one and done. You want to look at how you can continue to find keywords on each site that you can go deeper into your site with. What I mean by that is building out additional pages through each, each page, taking the, the, top keywords on that page or top uh, 
areas you want to focus on in that page and, and going deeper into your site with additional pages that you can link, link into. And then blogging. We really recommend blogging as a top strategy to creating your expertise and to showing Google that you really understand a particular uh, content service area and that you are an expert on that er area by continuing to blog and be relevant with your blogs in terms of topics, uh, seasons, and target areas. And then share all this information on social media using your social media uh, channels. Ideally, uh, LinkedIn and Facebook are going to be the top two that we're going to recommend for our clients and then continue to review those results using that Google Analytics tool. Now lastly, <clears throat> one of the things that we get asked about a lot is how do you choose a good SEO consultant? Now, of course, you can choose to do this all yourself, and hopefully we've given you enough information to just get a good head start on that yourself. But also we've had people ask us about a good search engine consultant. How do you know when somebody's doing a good job or not? And, and we're really grateful that we have an excellent uh, team with Dove Shore and Jacob Maslow that work with us. Um, but it's not always possible to work with Dove. So we were skepti skeptical ourselves when it came to choosing an SEO consultant. So first think about as you're kind of kicking tires with somebody that you might want to bring on to help you, think about what results you want to see and really identify, you know, do you want to have um, a certain amount of people land on your home page and click on a, blo a certain blog? Or do you have, uh, I know one thing that we've done on our website is we have a survey um, for people to take if they want to determine whether or not they want to use uh, outsource marketing services and that's been an area that we've really tried to focus on getting people to click through on. So identify what type of results you would like to see and be very specific, especially as you're kind of quote unquote kicking the tires with a new consultant. Um, and then identify two or three, keep it really simple, keywords that you want to rank for. So what I mean by that is uh, Dove has really um, reiterated with us that you cannot rank for several keywords all together right off the bat. So, for example, with that John A. Knudsen, tax accountants in St. Paul was one of the very first things that he wanted us to focus on, getting results around, and then you can start to add on keywords after that that you want to rank for. So when you're choosing a search engine consultant or kicking tires with them, you know, identify just one or two keywords that you want to be coming up for on a search engine result or that you want to be analyzing in terms of results. And then lastly, again, go over those Google Analytics with your consultant regularly. And we are now doing that with our clients on a on a quarterly basis because we found that when we did it every month that the 10% rule was just continuing to apply and we weren't seeing much change beyond the 10% up or down. And so when we do it on a quarterly basis, we can see more change and we can you know, get a better picture of what's been working or maybe not working for us as well. So we recommend doing it on a three month basis. So with that, I have, uh, I'm willing to take some some questions now if people have questions in regards to what you've heard today on the webinar in uh, regarding search engine optimization. So uh, looks like I have a question on uh, Yoast with Wix. And I will be honest, this question is coming from Lynn. Lynn, you know, Dove and I did not talk about Wix. If I had Michelle here on the line or Dove, I, they probably could go into more detail about using Yoast with Wix. Um, that's not something I'm familiar with. If you want to email me privately, I'd be happy to find that uh, answer out for you from Dove and or Michelle. Um, so feel free to, to email me at christy at psm.com if you'd like to find out that answer. That's the only question I have right now. Is there anybody else that would like to shoot a question in? I'm happy to um, answer any other questions, or if I can't answer it, I'm definitely willing to um, find out other answers for you. Well, I've got, looks like another question here came in uh, regarding negative reviews. 
Uh, somebody asks, what do you think about addressing someone, a person's review by offering to make something right? So um, I have seen this not as much with professional services as I have with um, for companies like Comcast or companies that are dealing with high volume um, service issues. And I personally would recommend that that is the strategy that you would want to do, which is, um, you know, apologize. You know, always want to, you know, use the strategy of, or maybe not even apologizing, but just, you know, addressing the fact that you understand their concern. It's a relevant concern if, if you believe it is. And then, yes, going ahead and, and addressing the fact that you would, you know, like to see if you could be of further assistance to them. I think that's a great strategy. So, yes, uh, within reason, I would definitely recommend that. And I have found that to be something that I respect when I see um, firms do that or companies do that right online. Okay. Let's see, I think I might have one more question. No, oh, that's it. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out the webinar and just let you know that this will be available online if anybody wants to uh, download this later or share this information. And again, just remind you that we do have the handouts that you can download if for some reason you weren't able to do that and uh, would still like to have those handouts, feel free to email us. And uh, our email will, is available here on the screen for both Terry and myself. And then also in a follow-up email that you'll be getting the recording in shortly after today's webinar, you'll also have access to our emails in there as well. So thank you again for jumping on our webinar today and appreciate you attending. And we look forward to having you on the next one uh, coming up in two months. Thanks and have a great day.